Hello, everyone. Welcome to another International Relations Capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. Today, we will discuss the recent controversy over shooting of a Chinese flying object, maybe a balloon, over US territory. This is being discussed not just because it has resulted in the shooting of what China calls a surveillance vehicle, but also because it shows that the relationship between US and China are deteriorating fast. In normal circumstances, something like this would not have assumed the proportions it did, because these things do happen. Balloons tend to fly over other people's territories, and there is a certain code of conduct in which you protest or you even shoot, shoot down and then exchange ideas and so on, and then come to some kind of a, a compromise and assurances that this will not happen. But the fact that there are spying aircraft or spy balloons are floating over all over the world is a matter which is very well known. Uh, in international relations, there is one principle which is respected that trust but verify. So you trust your friends and even adversaries, but you must always verify that they are on the wrong track, on the right track. And therefore, a certain amount of verification of facts is done by all countries in the world, depending on their on their the vast the vastness of their interests in certain regions. So between US and China, certainly these things have happened in the past and will also happen in the future. But the fact that the United States postponed, not canceled, a visit by the Secretary, Secretary of State Blinken on account of this incident was rather of an overreaction. And this shows that U.S.-China relations are not yet uh, on, a, uh, on a balanced scale. Uh, President Biden has been very busy dealing with Russia, Ukraine, and NATO, and so on. Though he has made some pronouncements on China, it would appear that he had not yet formulated his policies, uh, whether it is an adversary, or it is just a rival, or or it's a, an ordinary relationship, strategic partner, all these options remain. And uh, things are yet to be settled. And uh, Blinken was, was going to, uh, uh, Secretary of State was going to China after 2018. And uh, to have postponed it or canceled it was a rather important uh, development. So it is in this context that many people look at this incident. Does it reflect a deterioration? Does it reflect a status quo? What, is, what are these two countries going to do with each other in terms of security? These are all, all questions. So when the, uh, the, the balloon was, uh, was spotted, as early as uh, January 28th, they did not shoot it down immediately. It was due after due deliberation that it was done in the sense they watched it, made sure that this is a, a balloon which is the size of three buses, three school buses. So they had to make sure that there were no human beings on board. They had to make sure that when you shoot the debris, it does not fall on uh, inhabited areas. And even if it is falling in the sea, it should not fall on anything that is valuable. It should be possible for them to secure the debris and take it to the laboratories in the adjacent areas. All these considerations were taken before the president gave the, gave the order to shoot. Uh, it all happened as, uh, as imagined, and the debris was immediately taken to the FBI laboratories. And the Chinese, of course, uh, were declared that it was not a military operation at all. It was a weather related 
uh, balloon which was studying the weather in the area. And uh, but it was a sensitive area because it flew over uh, areas where there are nuclear installations, like in uh, Alaska and also next door in Western Canada. So all these factors were taken into account when it was done. Uh, and the Chinese reacted quite strongly. And uh, for a few days, continued this discussion as to whether it was the right thing that the Chinese did by sending these balloons and whether the Americans were right in shooting it down. Was it worth affecting the relationship between the two countries? So all this was discussed. And many thinkers, writers, commentators in the United States itself felt that this was an overreaction uh, because this is something which can happen. And I believe that some more, three more uh, balloons were shot after the first one and 4th of February, more or less in the same area. So there is a way of uh, you know adjusting and tolerating some of these things. And as long as there is no evidence that they have gathered some very secure information which should not have gone into their hands. But we must realize that today technology has grown so much that uh, from a satellite, you can even uh, count the calories on a Coca-Cola bottle, how much calories it contains. You can read it from a satellite up there. So what is the need for any country to engage in so many activities closer to Earth? when such possibilities exist. So the only explanation is that they don't want to leave anything to chance. They want their friends and enemies and everybody. They should understand them, their intentions, their activities, etc. And therefore, starting from sending actual individual human spies for contacts to satellites, every methodology is employed. And, uh, and they know each other so well also. So the American reaction is considered to be rather uh, unusual. And uh, there was criticism. And uh, interestingly, both sides, China and uh, United States, have tried to play down the incident after it occurred. Uh, the Americans said at some stage that uh, perhaps it may have been a benign uh, aircraft. I mean, it may have been a balloon, which uh, probably was meant only for weather. So they, they softened their approach a little bit. They said that Mr. Blinken had not really canceled his visit to, the, visit to China. It was only postponed that he might uh, go there uh, pretty soon. And um, these balloons who have, which have been in the in the area have been shot down on the February 10th, 11th, and 12th. So, but it remains, the fact remains that uh, all countries capable and interested in this incident, in this kind of operation, are making a lot of investment in military use of balloons. So obviously balloons are capable of doing something in, uh, which is different from the other methods. And that is what we should note. So okay, whoever is in, uh, this incident occurred in the US relations, lowest in the last decades relationship. And the strategy competition between US and China has also aggravated. So you had, uh, US and had detected some balloons, balloon technology, which is being deployed even in 2014. All these were known. So this another feature of this balloon was that it had rudders and propellers, not simply floating in the air, it could be controlled. Uh, and, um, uh, and it could be diverted to various areas when there could be a possibility of a shootout. So it, and it has the capacity also to stay in the air for long periods. And it is very difficult to detect too. So these were the factors which would have prompted them to 
shoot the balloon. And interestingly, this was flying at an altitude of about 60,000 feet when it was shot down. So surveillance, nuclear installation is possible even from that distance. And uh, this is the only uh, craft we can fly at that altitude because um, uh, even and the Concorde is the only other aircraft which can fly at this height of 60,000 feet. So that means there is something in this balloon which is very special and uh, which caused uh, uh, suspicion. So in the briefing, American briefings, they said that uh, this fell in the ocean, an area of 2.25 kilometers extended to that. And um, it was meant, the Chinese had meant to demonstrate its intention and the show of force. So there are all these factors, political and strategic factors, because it is not just as simply a balloon which was floating around, but it was controllable, it was uh, had radars and other equipment. And um, US, US action was uh, considered unacceptable and irresponsible by China. So initial reaction was really strong on, on both sides. And um, China demanded that the craft should be returned. And this was just a wandering balloon and US balloons have been crossing into Chinese territory very often. And they were, they were ignoring it. So, but uh, some commentators say that uh, this shows that the second Cold War, that is between US and China has begun and this is part of it uh, as it happened now. So, uh, of course, everybody will remember that there was this, um, a shoot down of a U-2 aircraft in 1960, which was a very significant development. It had a determined effect on the, on the Cold War and uh, it created quite a sensation at that time. So maybe a, a comparable aircraft is being shot down for the first time since uh, 1960. That's also important. But after a week or so, as I was saying earlier, the United States took a step back and uh, played down the incident. Some commentators said that the uh, US overreacted and um, these could be balloons tried for commercial purposes. And the Americans even said it could be totally benign. So even that state. So that means they were basically saying that uh, Americans themselves overreacted to the situation. And, um, you know, accidents like the ones earlier which had happened should not take place. In 1983, there was a Korean airline which was shot down uh, by a mistaken identity. So Beijing is not seeking immediate normalcy, that's quite obvious, even though the Americans step back a little. Uh, but US balloons have, uh, they, they mentioned the US balloons which had come in the Chinese territory. And um, they started becoming a little bit apologetic about having, having done this. So China was trying to repair some uh, stations in Europe, flying over Europe. And um, China's support to Russia and NATO propaganda has not gone well in the United States. And uh, so there is a certain amount of rethinking on the part of US and China. And uh, evidence of this is that uh, the foreign minister of China is flying to Munich uh, for the annual uh, conference and uh, Secretary of State Blinken is also going to be there and there is some talk of uh, uh, an opportunity for them to meet and also to uh, reschedule uh, the visit of the Secretary of State to, to Beijing. So it is quite possible that uh, this crisis of the balloons or the battle of the balloons as I call it um, may kind of uh, cool down because both the countries are interested in not making it into a 
an issue that would spoil their relations in the future. So because China has uh, been identified with Russia in the case of Ukraine, there is considerable flack on it in the United States. And um, NATO has not taken kindly to China's uh, attitude. And therefore, it is quite possible that, uh, ironically, the shooting may result in some kind of a, a rapprochement between the US and uh, China, particularly if uh, Wang Yi and uh, Blinken meet at Munich, which is a security conference also. So, again, the State Department has uh, stated very recently uh, that um, they are interested in preserving the dialogue with China. They're saying preserving because they obviously have contacts with China and they do not want uh, this particular incident to spoil it. And um, uh, trying to understand each other. And uh, the State, State Department spokesman said that uh, uh, we do not see a conflict with China on account of this. So it may well be a happy ending in spite of the uh, tension that it generated between 28th October, sorry, 28th January, and now when about four such uh, balloons were shot down. So the damage was done in a sense uh, because the credibility was in question. What they were looking for is not yet determined whether there was any strategic interest for China in the observing these uh, installations is not very clear. So in many words, many ways, it is still unclear. But given the situation that uh, spying really does not require every, um, you know, uh, every, a trick in the armory, but uh, it is possible that all countries do these things depending on the particular requirement. So there is clearly a tendency uh, to play this down and uh, not make it affect in US-China relations. And that is on the advice, I think, of many experts who felt that this was a, an overreaction. So it's quite possible but after the Munich conference, uh, they may resume the dialogue and uh, things may turn out better for the China-US relations. So this was probably an error. This was a, probably a wrong judgment on the part of China and the United States. And now they regret the incident and they are trying to make up for the future. Thank you. U.S.-China relations are important and uh, it is something that uh, you should know and the general trends are very important. So these general trends could figure and they may ask you to identify some uh, events uh, which may be related to strategic thinking. Very much with the United States naturally because there was suspicion that uh, they were also uh, you know, flying over Western Canada, where they have some uh, secure installations there. And uh, so they completely, of course, the Western world completely supported the United States. Yeah, Russia has not reacted, I think. Uh, but um, Western world, including Canada, particularly because the United States mentioned that the, that the balloon flew over Canada, obviously their reaction was strong. Well, there is nothing right or wrong. As they say, everything is fair in love and war. So this is not a moral question. That's why I started by saying that uh, this is not unusual. Even between the best, best friends, people do not take any chances. Even we have been accused of spying. Uh, we have accused others of spying and all that. Even among friends. So this is not unusual. And therefore, there's no question of right or wrong, but whether it was justified or not, may be a question. And on the Chinese side, whether it was justified in sending these uh, balloons out and um, crossing over into other people's airspace, you can say it is wrong. But uh, sometimes balloons can you know, stray 
go into other territories. So whether it is necessary to shoot down or do you inform the country and ask them to divert it? There are so many options available here. And therefore, it's a not a matter of right or wrong, but of national interest. And if that national interest is affecting somebody else's security or national interest, that is the issue. That is where the judgment is to be made. And it looks that the US and China have made that judgment, have decided not to make this into a big issue, as it happened at the time of the shooting. Thank you. Thank you.